Hello everyone, how are we doing again? Um, episode 3 on this little series We're going to talk about setting out your strategy and how you want to be playing the index Okay, Now, if you caught us in the last video, we made our first couple of purchases We went and got some Mason Mount, some Jaden Sancho Okay, Unfortunately, off camera, some events have developed um, Ruben Loftus cheek picked up a big injury and a friendly with Chelsea in America Which is crazy, they're playing a friendly in America before a UEFA Cup final uh, Europa League, I beg your pardon and also the England squad was announced for the Nations League, okay? So, kind of off camera, we've made two additional purchases before the England squad came out, okay? So we went and picked up some Aaron Wan Bissaka, and we went and picked up some Declan Rice, okay? Now the Bissaka, we were kind of thinking he was going to be in the squad, to be honest with you, I was hoping. Because uh, Trippier, even though they've got to the Champions League final, he's not the best of seasons, he's came in line for some criticism, as is Kyle Walker. And Aaron Wan Bissaka, I don't think he's had one bit of criticism levied towards him. So I thought that may have been a surprise inclusion in a sense because Gareth Southgate has been renowned for sticking with players as well as integrating some form players and you can see that with the guys like Redmond and Ward Prowse and whatever and you'll probably see them here on the, the increase list in the squad players section yeah you know so you can see what a massive turnaround percentage wise you can have with a player by you know a turn of events like this okay so this kind of falls in line quite nicely with what we want to chat about in this little video which is setting out your strategy I'm going to link some videos in the comments in the, the description below, okay, of other videos I've did in the past to outline the principles you need to have a long-term uh, strategy and then just how you want to dissect up your portfolio into little different segments, okay. But what we've done so far, like I said she's in the last video, is you always want to start off with a nice, solid, stable core, you know, they're not really gambly uh, holds where you're kind of, oh, I hope they get a move to... Real Madrid or you know this little player he's only played five games for some team in Germany but I hope he gets a move to Arsenal you know those kind of ones that are a bit more riskier in the short term we want to start our portfolio off with a nice solid stable core okay now one thing I really want you to get into your kind of psyche with this okay is not to look at as having two Sancho three Mount and look at how much they've went up and gone, oh, we've went up two pence and nine pence, or whatever it is, it's not very exciting, you know. Um, but what you need to look at this as, is £35 has been in, and what is it doing for you, okay? Now, all four of those players all fit the basic same criteria, okay? Number one, they're English, they're young, they're unlikely to get linked to transfers, if not a transfer go through to a, a, a higher rated team in European competitions and more likely to win games and more likely then to perform better on performance buzz and media buzz when they're linked to transfers, all this type of thing as well, okay? And they're all in, with the exception of Sancho being in the Bundesliga, but they're all going to be in the Premier League next year, you know? So they all fit the same criteria, so you need to move away from it as being, I've got four players, we have one type of hold right now, we have one flavour in this portfolio at the moment okay and that is young exciting players that are likely to get transferred that have had a good season this year okay that is all we have okay we basically have one type of hold now okay so your strategy will vary okay you will change your mind on what strategy is right for you what's something you want a you see is more profitable potentially okay but before you can set your strategy out the first thing you need to do is take one step back and go what do i want to achieve from this okay now if you check out my videos on the channel You'll see I'm all about replacing this with traditional gambling, traditional accumulators in play bets, goal scorers, all that type of thing. Because your likelihood of success on them overall, you know, is is, is tiny by comparison to football index, okay? If pardon me, uh, let's say for example Mason Mount went back on loan to Derby next year. He might move back in price from 177 where I've bought him to maybe 160. That isn't actually going to happen, to be truthful with you. I wouldn't see that as a backward movement to that extent, but that is possible. We're then talking about losing 17 pence on a bet. You know, any other bets you make, it's win or lose. You lose your stake or you win your stake back with some profit. You know, whereas this has a lot of amazing middle ground where you can't really lose too much, okay? And if you check out my earlier videos um, on the channel, you'll see I make withdrawals constantly. I make withdrawals after big trades all the time that are profitable because I want to have money come back into my account. So that's my strategy. Your strategy might be very similar. Your strategy might be, I want to put money into this and turn it into something or, you know, you need to have your end goal set out. You know, with the last withdrawal I made, I withdrew like £1,300. I had a tax bill to pay and I knew I had the tax bill to pay. So when I was um, 
making buys and putting money away, I had a deadline in my head of on this date I need to pay my tax bill and it is this amount, it's a set amount. So I want as much of that bill to be paid by football index profit than anything else. Some people, you'll see them on Twitter, they withdraw money and they go and buy like, I don't know, like a games console or they put a deposit down on a holiday. And some people who have crazy money on the index will buy a house. You know what I mean? But you need to have a target in mind. A purchase is always a good thing. You know, a computer game you're eyeing up in the next month for, you know, it could be anything, you know, like getting ahead on your payments on your car, a weekend away, holiday, whatever it is, okay? So that needs to be your starting point. I've got a holiday in August and then you work back the way from there, okay? So I want to have, I'm going to, rather than just saving up money for spending, I'll put my spending money into this and I'd like to see it rise by X amount of percent before I withdraw it or, you know, whatever it might be. So that's where you need to start, okay? You then get, in my opinion, a couple of a couple of core principles that you can follow on the index in terms of strategy, okay? You can have a long-term strategy where you buy somebody the now and you don't care about their movements in the short term. The short term, in my perspective, is um, like a month. That is short term to me, okay? Short term to you might be three months, it might even be a year, okay? Everyone's perspective is slightly different. So a long-term hold is something you're going to hold for you know, I don't think anyone would consider a long-term hold anything less than six months, okay? Six months, and for most people, you would probably get agreement that is a long-term hold for somebody, okay? And what would you expect on your money? Not that person, not £5.29, but on the money you're going to put in, £500, £10, what would you expect that to do over six months, okay? What is your guideline, okay? Now, I'll tell you right now, in 2018, Football Index uh, told us this in a video quite recently, but in 2018... If you held one future of every player on the index, you would have made 19% profit, okay? So for me, 19% has to be the benchmark for, you know, that's you doing well, you know, you're you're going, you're going, following the market trend, you know, if you're only making 10% on, a, you know, and you need to look at these things in a sensible time scale. Are we going to make 10% 10, 10 in 24 hours? Of course you're not, you know, but any sort of guideline you're looking for, something you see is realistic, a three month period, a six month period, a one month period, 19% is your kind of benchmark for when you know you're getting things right, okay? When you're getting things extremely right, then you'll go beyond that threshold, and if you're nowhere near it, then you really need to think to yourself, what are you doing, okay? Now, with your strategy, I'll show you the transactions we've had on this account, okay? So we opened this account yesterday, um, and you can see everything here, okay? This is, these are all the buys and everything, okay? Now, at the moment, that commission column is zero, okay? Now, every strategy you have has to center around that commission column staying as close to zero as humanly possible, okay? Because that is money. That's your 2% commission for selling anything that the index charge you for the privilege of using their service and making money, okay? Which we're all happy to do, okay? But the mistake I made on my own account in the first six months is I bought and sold and changed my mind all the time um, and I've hemorrhaged commission much, much more than I really should have, okay? So your long-term strategies especially, that will help keep the commission column down, okay? Now, there is another strategy where you can go short-term and there's a thing called day trading, okay? Now, day trading is you buy somebody for a day and you sell them, okay? And those people you'll commonly find, like... So, for example, today, if you had your finger on the pulse and you were waiting for that England squad to come out, you could have picked up Nathan Redmond for 48 pence and then take the rise on him when the squad, everyone else then hears the squad five minutes after you, an hour after you, whatever, and then shoots up to 59 pence. You can then sell them and you've made some quick profit, something to the effect of around the 15, 20% mark, depending on how you sell, when you sell, and when you bought. That's what you call day trading. For you to be a success at that, you need to have a loose capital in the top right of your screen there in your balance. If you're going to be quick selling someone else to jump on an opportunity like that, I can tell you right now, you're not going to make money. Um, you're, you will just be throwing money away and you'll make stupid decisions. And I don't say that word lightly, okay? So that's day trading. To day trade, you need to have money in your account, spare, ready to capitalize on an opportunity as news breaks, okay? Um, and then the other kind of short-term one, which we can't really make full... Um, we can't take full advantage of at this time of year is uh, match day related stuff where a good run of fixtures is coming on to a player they've got Champions League they've got treble match days they've got single match days because single match days guys if you look at the breakdown we had in the last video of the dividends percentage wise 
bearing in mind that on a single match day you have less competition for dividends in terms of how many players are active but the percentage of wins on a single match day is far is pretty attractive when you weigh up the possibility of winning um, for the amount you will win you know so single match days are something to be coveted when we get back into that cycle and again we run a series on this channel called uh, fantasy football on football index and there's a whole playlist you can go and check that out and how to utilize ipds and how to play around um, fixtures changing and getting on a player early and as the fixtures become more obviously attractive to people you can then sell them at a higher price and then maybe net you some dividends along the way as well um, and then you've got just general um, market spotting so you're catching somebody who you look at the market and how the market's moving okay now one thing i always draw your attention to on this channel with most of the just general like videos that you're going to come across is what you see in the top right hand corner there the market cap okay so that tells you how much money is slushing about the index okay and then the little blue number to the right there you'll see 98.24 the index today has risen by 98 points basically okay the more it rises the more money's in the index the more likely you're to have players rising because there's more money going into them okay or into the market depending on who you hold and if that's where the money's flowing into like a Wilfred Zaha, Moussa Dembele, Moss Kane, uh, Mason Mount, whatever it might be okay um, so you need to you, you need to keep in mind of the market cap and see where it's going but if you know that we're about to come into some periods where there's going to be announcements or more money's coming into you know football index there's more users on board whatever then you're looking at people and saying they are undervalued right now why are they undervalued is it because they're not in the spotlight at the moment is it something that the spotlight will come on to shortly i'm expecting i'm just going to pull one out my backside now so joe gomez he's um coming back from injuries in the england squad he's got a champions league final he's got a pre-established ceiling which is a word we use or a phrase we use quite a lot in this channel of let's just call it 147 at the moment he's at 132 okay so that is 15 pence which is just better than 10 percent let's call it 12 percent so he's got a 12 percent ceiling there that he can achieve when he gets back to playing matches and he does well on match days okay so for him to have a champions league final a treble match day and then the nations league with england coming up and um, he has a potential to rise in price maybe not all the way to the ceiling of 147 but somewhere there or thereabouts okay but that's based on the market cap what it was at the end of April, beginning of May, which wasn't actually terribly different to how it sits now. But when you can see up someday a bit more historically, so who could be a good example of this for us? Let's say Sani, right? So Sani, when he peaked out at 2.50, that's about the same kind of time actually, isn't it? Let's have a look at a year. Yeah, he's about the same. Let's say Rafael Leal. Yeah, that's a good one. I oh know he's kind of got back up to his peak again, hasn't he? No, not quite. So Rafael Leal peaked out late February, early March, when the market cap, I guess, would have been about 70,000, and he's peaked out at £1.60. The market cap is raised by 20,000 points. Um, so next time he comes back into the spotlight on the index, he may be, I suspect he's going to the Under-20 World Cup in Portugal, so... If he does well at that, he gets linked with a transfer, or he comes back into the next season, he's playing well at Lille, scoring goals, making assists, he's a hot topic again, then he's got that ceiling there, but the ceiling was established when the market was smaller. So you then expect him to break that ceiling and go on and go past it, and that gives you a good barometer then. And also I've got the benefit of being on the index for a while, and I can kind of cite and quote these different caps, okay? But again, that's just somebody who you see has been undervalued in the market. Why is he undervalued? Well, at the moment, He's not playing any football. He had a great period of form and then his form dipped off and that's why his price went down. And at the moment, he's not been mentioned for transfers now. And the Lille president said that he is untransferable this summer. So that may be a, may be a bargaining tactic, you know, a uh, strategy from Lille. But it does sound like, because he's openly said they'll be selling Pepe this summer. So you maybe think he's probably not going to move. So people will be moving their money into people who will move. So if you want to hold somebody for a year, this potentially could be somebody, oh, I'd say potentially, he's almost certainly going to be undervalued if that's your time scale on him, okay? So um, a lot of food for thought, guys. You really need to have, what? because let's call a spade a spade. When you open up your index account, you're going to want to buy a few futures, okay? You want to buy a few players. Buy the safest people you want that you can possibly see on the different criteria and if you're not sure about the criteria i'll just say it again i'll have some videos linked in the description below where you can go and see all that but make some safe purchases and then have that as your core and then your next set of purchases you might want to expand on your strategy your you know and that's all the stuff we've basically outlined in this video here okay thanks for tuning in guys and i'll catch you on the next one take care bye bye